started recording. So what we covered yesterday, we have covered few things. One is how to install and configure ESXi 6.7. So today, today what we will do is, let's say for example, if I want to install one more ESXi, the procedure will remain same or it is going to be vary. My question is, mm -hmm. I have a rack. Okay. And okay. What I did, I've installed three ESXA servers into the rack. What are all those three ESXA servers? HP DL380 Gen 10. I've installed okay. ESXA server on top of this. And the second one and third one still remaining. This, okay. this is in real time what I'm talking about. Yesterday we have installed on one server. Mm -hmm. Today we still have two more servers to complete. So is that procedure mm -hmm. is going to be vary or it is the same procedure? It's the same procedure. Right? So installation configuration is done on one host. In my lab, mm -hmm. if I simulate this, how it will be? I have created one VM, installed a configure mm -hmm. ESXA on top of it, and mm -hmm. this matches with this procedure. Okay, so yeah. do I need to create one more VM and simulate this? Because we already did once. So I don't want to repeat once okay. again, right? So let's understand a few more things here. Okay, so what I will do in today's session, we'll try to understand the second it the second point is vm sorry virtual machine files i want to understand virtual machine files means i created a vm yesterday blindly right mm -hmm. so what all the files mm -hmm. get, yeah. that gets created on the back end i want to understand and mm -hmm. when i when i power on it what are the additional files that i'll get into the picture let's see those things today okay so for that what mm -hmm. i will do i'll go ahead and create one more machine go to virtual machines mm -hmm. create mm -hmm create a new virtual machine and what is the name mm -hmm. us pdc esxi 002 002 dot right uh, uh, there is some doubt yeah tell me what is the difference between esx and esxi that's a very old legacy concept now. We'll discuss that later on. Okay, it's, it's back back in 2003-2004 uh, concept. Okay, just for interviews, okay. people will ask you. I'll explain that later on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So select the ESX SSD. Mm -hmm. And I'll provide the same amount of CPU which I have. And again, I'll put it on 8 GB memory and what is the storage that mm -hmm. i provided yesterday 15 gb right and mm -hmm. now imagine 15 gb where i'm saving under ssd there is a folder called server name mm -hmm. under this you will see the files will files will be placed so always thin provision and mm -hmm. what is the vlan 30 or 40 is it, is it, sorry yesterday we took 30 no? yeah can you come closer because i'm not able to hear your voice please or okay. put, put your put your microphone nearby if you, are, if you join from mobile because it's i can barely hear you uh, how is it now yeah it's okay Next, this is a 
this is the configuration if you just click finish mm -hmm. vm has been created what is the vm the question is what is the vm VM, uh, it's a virtual machine. Basically, uh, uh, the very basic we can say it's just a, a program running on, like program. It is utilizing the hardware. I'll say program. Yeah, set of logical programs we can say. My files. Agree. Yeah. Simply set of files that will be executed by okay. ESXi. So let's see what all those files. <clears throat> Go to storage, mm -hmm. SSD, browse data store, mm -hmm. and you will see as I said, this directory has been created with the name. Go inside the directory, you will see three different files. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are those three different files? Let's note it down. VMDK, VMSD, VMX. Server name. You'll see the server name mm -hmm. and dot VM. Mm -hmm. How many files you see? Th three files. What are those file names? VMDK. Mm -hmm. v VMX. Uh, VMSD. Only three files you look at. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. let yeah. me go back and check. BIOS. So, VMX holds the config, configuration. Configuration part. Okay. So, mm -hmm. what is this? Virtual machine disk. It's kind disk of hard file. drive. Holds data. Hmm. Okay. Dot VMSD. Snapshot hmm. metadata file. Okay, if you look at whenever you create a VM, you will see only three files will get mm -hmm. created. Okay. Understand? So the space which we have given, like 15 GB of space which we have allotted to a particular VM, that is VMDK, yes. right? Yes, this. Yes. If a specific virtual machine has a four disk files, means four drives you want to assign C D E F. Then whenever you create a VM inside the virtual machine, if you go and check, you will see four VMDK files here. Okay. Four four yeah. VMD four VMDK files here. But we are seeing only one now. We have assigned only one fifteen GB disk, no. If I, I said if you okay. assign okay. If, if you assign four four drives to any virtual machine which is Windows, like C, D, E, F. Mm -hmm. On the back end, you will see four VMDK files for that particular virtual machine. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I got it. Uh, okay, I got it. Okay, so this is, please note, please note, what is the condition? Mm -hmm. When you, Create a VM. Uh, VM for the first time. Same VM. 
Mm -hmm. Same VM, if I go back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simply select and power on. Mm -hmm. the, moment, the moment I power mm -hmm. on, go back to the storage browser. You'll see how many files that got extracted. Lot more. Yeah. Many files? Tell me the additional there files. There are many files here. Tell me the additional files now. There are there was dot log file. So two swap files. V and V RAM swap. Yeah. Okay. ICK was also V S W P. That is one file. Another one. NVRAM. NVRAM. Another one. If you see VMX is one file, but there are two more VMX files. Mm -hmm. With LCK, with mm -hmm. auxiliary. Mm -hmm. VMX. LCK. VMX. Mm -hmm. Auxiliary. And one more mm -hmm. log file. How many? There are two swap files here. Mm -hmm. One and two. And NVRAM, mm -hmm. VMX two files, one log file. One, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, six extra files, and three. Nine files you will see. One, two, three, four, mm -hmm. five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is when you power on. Let's understand what is this NVRAM file. Mm -hmm. This file format is used by virtual machine. Small data are used by VM website software. It is saved as part of the overall. Let me see. Non volatile random access memory, which means it retains information even when the computer is turned off. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So NVRAM will contain, let's say, for example, this virtual machine has 4 GB RAM. Right? Mm -hmm. So, right. If there is any data that needs to be holded by NVRAM, this file will hold the mm -hmm. RAM content when the machine is powered off. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, this is one thing. Another another one, mm -hmm. dot log, you know, whenever you power on the machine, you will see one log file will be created. Okay, whenever you power on the machine, you will see one log file will be created. created. And how many log files, such log files you will see in the folder? Seven log files by default. Means today you powered on the machine, one log file. And turn off and tomorrow you power on mm -hmm. once again, you will see another log file will be created. And day after tomorrow, another. And so on. Let me see. Yesterday we on a machine right so yesterday's machine mm. only one log file mm. if i if i power on the yesterday's machine you will see second log file will be created mm. okay S similarly you'll see log files will get created you see two log files for other machines mm -hmm. Okay, so log files will be created up to seven. Once the seven log files get created, whenever the whenever you pour on the machine for the eighth day or the eighth time, mm -hmm. okay, so oldest log file will get removed. Okay. Okay. So, what is this dot v, vmx dot lck <laughs> dot LCK. Okay. 
lock files are created when the virtual machine is powered on. This purpose will prevent the multiple VMA processes from accessing the same virtual machine at the, at the same time. Means mm -hmm. <coughs> you need to understand when you power on the machine, this VMX file, what is this? Config file, right? Will get config file logged. This file gets locked. So the lock file will here and this auxiliary file is there, no? What is this? Just a second, let me check. Yeah. A lot of noise. I connected the Bluetooth headset. Okay. So this auxiliary file, I haven't seen any data. What it will hold? Let's say, for example, the machine is power on. The machine is power on. You want mm -hmm. to add, you want to add additional disk, or you want to modify something. Will mm -hmm. you be able to without without shut down the machine? Will you be able to? Uh, Ideally, yeah, we can do it if it is a yeah. Here it is. We can do it. Right. And it is a server, so we we can do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, a lot of okay. So what happens when you when you when you modify? Oh man, a lot of noise. Can you be on mute? Sure, sure. Thanks. Okay. Oh my God. So whenever you modify something, because the original file can't hold the changes because it is in read-only mode, and the lock is applied. So what happens, whatever the changes that you are doing on the virtual machine that get saved over here, imagine. Okay, so once the changes were saved here, whenever you reboot the machine for the next time, maybe after a week, a month or so, so these changes, whatever the changes that is holded by this file will get inserted into original VMX file. Okay, so let's say if I go back, Machines, edit settings. I'll make this as a 16 GB, means modified something. Then modified something, go back and browse. See, this, this file should hold the configuration because it is, it cannot be modified. 10, 9, when it is 23. Okay, so this file should hold the configuration. And when you power off, when you power off this machine, go back and those two auxiliary files will disappear. See, all are gone except the NVRAM file. Dot VMX is remain same. Other two files are gone now. Understand? So this holds the configuration. So the auxiliary file holds the yes. temp temporary configuration. And swap file, you know what is page file in Windows? What is the purpose of page file? Yeah. Yeah, it's a kind of a temporary RAM, uh, but it utilizes the hard drive. Hard disk, right? Yeah, hard disk. Uh, okay, it, it will it will take some part of the hard disk and it will dump the data which is unused or it is which is not being used in the RAM so that the transactions will go faster on the RAM. Right? Temporary RAM, you can say yeah, the page, yeah, right. page file. Similarly, the swap file is same on the back end. In Linux, you call it as a swap file. In Windows, you call it as a page file. Page file, yeah. Okay, the swap file is replacement for the page file in Windows concept. On the back end, you will see 
the swap files will be created because if you are you have allocated 4 GB RAM to the virtual machine, but there is a requirement of around 4 400 GB RAM at a single instance, but there is some unwanted data inside the RAM. What it will do? It will simply copy the data onto the swap file and so that the machine can run faster with the available RAM. Okay. Clear? Yes. These are the <coughs> some of the VMware file extensions. When you power on, you'll see these many files. When you create a VM for the first time, you will see only these three files. When you power off, some of these files will be disappeared and this file will remain same here. And the log file will remain same here. Yes. Understand? This is yeah. one thing. Now, what is this? You have virtual machine. And now you you mm -hmm. clear i mean you know how to create a vm how to install and configure the vm how much time it takes today uh, to install a vm hmm. it took around uh, 15 minutes to install and configure it took 15 minutes but for installing it took hardly five minutes okay so there is a windows server which you want to install it and the image size is somewhere around 25 GB or something. How much time it will take to install, configure and manage everything? Installation, configuration and customization. Manage in the sense. Let's say one hour or two hours. Yeah. Okay. So if I ask you to, if I ask you to do the same step for a whole day, I gave you nine servers. I gave you nine mm -hmm. server, nine servers. I said you need to create nine VMs by end of the day today. So will you be, will you be able to? Mm -hmm. No. Any specific reason? Because each each will take mm -hmm. around each will take around two hours. one hour one and a half hour. So, it won't but, be possible. Yeah. yeah, but there is a logic called I, I I haven't mentioned any conditions. I said, boss, create the machine, and uh, rest of the machines can also be the same configuration. You don't need to worry about the configuration. So you have created Windows 2019 server example, and for other servers, or rest of the servers, I mean, other eight servers also. 2019 only and little RAM size is mm -hmm. varies and the CPU size varies. Rest of the configuration is same. I said. Okay. So can we can we do something like cre create one VM and customize whatever the customization mm -hmm. that you want to do it and power off it mm -hmm. and just click on it. This is the VM, right? Right click. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh man, a lot of noise. Export. To image. Okay, or else export with images. Let's see. So you can export this into your desktop, into your desktop as a single file means if you export it what happens if you export it what happens the whole machine will be exported along with the configuration mm -hmm. the pre pre-installed OS everything okay so that you call it as OVA OVA means open virtualization appliance there is another file format. You can call it as OVF. Open virtualization mm -hmm. format. Okay. There's not much difference. Only the difference is OVA, one single image you will get. OVF, same VM, it will be exported into multiple files. Multiple disk, multiple files. That is only the difference. 
now you have a pre-configured OVA. You just need to deploy it. How much time it will take? You don't need to install it. You don't need to configure it. You don't need to do anything. You have a pre-configured image. Just deploy it. Assign the name. Assign the IP. Use it. So morning I gave you nine servers. You spend two hours of your time to build one machine and you configured everything and you convert that it done to you, you OVA file. And then from that OVA file, if you can create eight other virtual machines, will you be able to finish it off the task in one day? Yes, I guess. Yes, I guess we can do it in one day. Yes, yes. So how to do that? Let's see. I'll go to virtual machines. So whatever the virtual machines that we have created yesterday and today, I'll simply delete them because I just want to demonstrate how to install and configure it. But the, I cannot use those machines to run the nested lab. So if you want to practice for yourself, there is a site called virtually ghetto. Go to here and nested virtualization he did some customization on on the image so if you go to nested appliances you can go through the steps what he did and you can simply download this ova file means same ESXS 6.7 mm -hmm. he did some customization and he created an ova file you can download it and you can use it this is pre-configured yes exactly oh. okay we we can also create it but you need to spend some time and he did some firmware changes he did some some of those plugins and he changed some security boot settings and everything so what i will do is i'll i'll simply download this image and i have it in my local desktop i'll show you how to deploy this ovf template so go to machine okay. Create a virtual machine. This time I won't create. This time I will deploy virtual machine from OVF or OVA file. Next. Now what is the production? PC ESXi01 dot. Huh? This is the machine name I want to use. Select the image where I have the image softwares nested ESXi. I have a 6.0, 6.5, 6.7. So I'll select 6.7. Okay. So this image will, will be deployed now under the selected mm -hmm. storage. Okay. Next. And he has some license agreements. Next. Where you want to place it? VLAN 30. Always thin provision. VLAN 30. Tall. Thin provision. Expand. If you want to do customization, you can do customization. I don't want to do any customization as of now. Simply next. Deploy. Let's see how much time it will take. It is failing. Let's see. Upload disk is failed. Let me try once again. Not sure why it is failed. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. VM one might be some <coughs> some issue. I'll put it on second SSD. VLAN 30 in provision. I'll not say power on. Okay. Finish.
Oh, it's not uploading. Mm -hmm. Post NS data fail. Might be <clears throat> might be having some configuration issues. <clears throat> Let me see. Mm -hmm. This is recommended. Let me try it out. What he's saying was okay. Six point five, it will start ever deploy, but let me. Same provision. Okay. I don't know if it works or not. Let's try. We try googling this. Actions uh, update three. This is update three. Let's study SX six point seven. Somewhere you'll see downloads. Download six point seven. See ES Excel downloads. No, it's not. Same thing, right? Um, 
Secret 3 is also there. Let me do one thing. <coughs> Strange. What I will do is I'll create a new VM. This is first time I'm facing mm -hmm. 6.7 because this is the first time I'm deploying the 6.7. So E6 is equal to 1. Let me put. Have okay, go to CD host device. We have already uploaded the 6.7, right? Yesterday, update three latest. Next, finish. It's very quick. See. So let me install this, just like what we did yesterday. I'll test something on top of this. If it works well, then probably we'll use the same our own uh -huh. SXA. Because that image, okay. what, I have, what I have downloaded is having some issue. Mm -hmm. I still need to look into okay. it. Mm -hmm. What is this error? Us, this error. Some exception handling is fine. You can. <clears throat> because okay. we, are not, we are not using real ESXs, so you'll always get error messages, warnings, errors. Oh. You know. okay. so, <clears throat> give me like two minutes. If it works well, then probably we'll use the same thing for our lab. Okay. Okay. So, 6.7 update 3. Okay, install F11. Same steps, what we did yesterday, I'm just repeating, but I want to test something else afterwards. Okay, it'll hardly take five minutes. Once this is done, I have, by mistake, I have deleted yeah, it's okay. A new learning every day. Okay. Yeah. Then so fast. Mm. Boot. So what I need to do? make some arrangement for the mic. You can connect if you log in from uh, laptop and you connect it from mobile. And you can connect your headset. It, it works easily. I don't know why. Or else, you can, yeah, you I can connect some the headset. Bluetooth headset. The uh, Mi Beats. Okay. I think there is no noise cancellation in this. That's why we are facing this issue. Oh, no problem. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So.
142 it picked. Let me see what is a VLAN I have deployed because I haven't mm -hmm. mentioned any VLAN, right? Yeah. So VLAN we can give later also. Yeah, you can change it later also. 192, 162, not 142. You got the ESXi up and running very quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a storage. So my aim is create one machine on top of it. Mm -hmm. If it works well, because I, I need to deploy some machines on top of it and <clears throat> power on. Okay. It's a problem, man. <coughs> this is the problem. There's no support in Intel VTX, so network adapter card. No, no. Okay. So I'll have to figure it out. So I'll see what I can do. Because I can, do that, but I cannot uh, pour on the VMs on top of it. See, if, it, if this VM won't pour on, and how, how we will uh, do the stuff. I'll have to figure it out. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, work on this today or tomorrow. If one sorted, then we'll continue. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll stop here. So we catch. We can catch up. I'll let you know tomorrow. If it is not sorted, then I'll, I'll let you know when after one or two days. Because six point seven, <laughs> that image is not deploying on top of six point five. So I'll have to figure it out what I can do. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Let no me problem. stop here. Yeah, yeah. Let me stop here. Yeah.